every good YouTube video starts with a good story. Well, you won't find any happy ending here. The How To Guy received a lot of comments. Thousands every year. He also received a lot of hate mail. Today was the day we would try and do 15 tips and questions for the DJI Pocket 2. Let's get started. So, 15 questions some people have asked me about the DJI Pocket 2, about the Pocket 1, about Fimi Palm. We're going to go through some stuff today using those anamorphic lenses. We're going to answer some questions about those ND filters. Let's get going. We don't have time to waste. Question 1. The DJI Pocket 1, will it work with a wide-angle lens with the ND filter? Let's just do a quick test and see how it looks. And it might improve the field of view of the DJI Pocket 1 if you already own one. This is the normal DJI Pocket 1 field of view. It's 80 degrees. I think it's 26 millimeters. It's not the widest lens this. I think Freewell actually, in my view, it's a little bit less wide than the old Freewell wide-angle lens that they created, which I have with me and we will test. So this is the new one that comes with the anamorphic kit. There is a wide-angle lens. Someone asked me this question, do these little anamorphic kit, the new one from Freewell, do these ND filters work without actually using the adapters? So can you put them on the DJI Pocket and somehow get it to work? Maybe there's a magnet or something. Now these things are quite fiddly, they come off pretty tight because there's like a magnetized thing over there. So I mean in theory it's a good question, let's test it out, but I don't think it's going to work. But if we use the DJI Pocket 2 with the do it all except pay your taxes handle, it does not attach. So at the very least, you need to use the wide-angle lens. You don't always want to shoot anamorphic, but you need to use that wide-angle lens in that kit and one of these ND filters, because it does go up to ND64, which is pretty useful. Next one, how do you get rid of that vertical bounce that you do get with the DJI Pocket 2? Well, there's actually a few ways to get rid of that. And I mean, you're never going to get it perfectly stable unless you sort of stabilize your footage in post. But So this is the normal Z-axis bounce, and it's not very nice. You can buy something from Scotty Make Stuff, but what if you don't have money? So I guess Rue's Reviews channel, he suggests using a little selfie stick and your hand sort of absorbs a lot of the vibrations before it actually gets to the end of the selfie stick and the DJI Pocket 2. Let's see if it makes any difference. So Ruse Reviews method doesn't do too bad and I'm not sure if I'm doing it right but I think if you actually shot in 60 frames per second you could even slow it down and get better video results. So this is just my little method, not sure if it's the best but I always put my DJI Pocket 2 in tilt lock mode if I'm moving forward but then I lock my arms to the right hand side of me and try to hold your DJI Pocket 2 kind of lightly almost like you're holding a cup of tea and you don't want to drop it and then as you're walking be conscious of your hip movement up and down because you don't want that that's what translates into your arms walk forward using the ninja walk the ninja walk i'll show you on the screen right now it's sort of like a heel to toe method now, i'm no expert on the ninja walk but i think locking your arms and sort of being conscious of your movement does actually help you could also slow this down if you did 60 frames per sec next question what are those little dot lrp files after doing the latest firmware on my dji pocket 2 what the hell are those things you might ask well, they're basically just media files, and I believe they're just low-quality versions of the .mp4 file. So you can actually go right-click and open with and choose Windows Media Player or whatever, and those files will actually play, and you'll see a real low-quality version. Not sure what they use for. I think the DJI Mimo app uses them. Let's move on to the next question. Next question. Should you actually use battery saver mode or high-quality mode on your DJI Pocket 2? I'm actually inclined just to leave my DJI Pocket 2 in battery saver mode, personally, because I think the high-quality mode does some in-camera noise reduction. It's going to shoot at a higher bitrate, it's going to warm up quicker, and I don't think the image looks any better. Let's do a little quick test. And how is this? This is battery saver mode, and I'm going to do a little comparison. On the left of me, I'll have someone standing here, and he's in high-quality mode, and let's do and let's compare the two let's zoom in like three or four hundred percent or something and just check is there any sort of artifacts or anything on the high quality mode is there any difference should you even bother should you just stay in battery saver mode what do you think in the comments which one looks better low light conditions with the dji pocket 2 now the dji pocket 2 has a max iso i think it's 6400 the old one the pocket one went up to 3200 so this thing would introduce more noise so if you're in a condition where you don't have much light and it's not really advisable to shoot with this thing when there is no light but if you got into that situation and you needed to boost your max iso up to 6400 can you do some noise reduction well you can actually do noise reduction some bugs attacking me sorry you can actually do noise reduction on dji pocket 2 in davinci resolve 16 or probably any video editing or nle of your choice but this was before noise reduction and let's switch to after noise reduction i'm not going to actually show you how to do this method it'll take too long i'll put it in another video but you can see there's much less noise on the top one hey how to go yes john is it possible to record two channels into the dji pocket 2 at once excellent question 
Let's test that out. Okay, DJI Pocket 2, the dual handle, 3.5 millimeter audio jack plugged in to the Lark 150 receiver, two external microphones. Let's test out if there's stereo recording or what this looks like. Testing, microphone connected. Okay, it seems to be working. We're gonna put these on 12. Testing, testing. Okay, uh, the rain is starting to come down, so let's put this one over here, over there. Let's test this microphone first. This is stereo recording the Lock 150 going into the DJI Pocket 2. Is this channel doing anything on the left or the right? Do you hear something more in your left or right ear to the other one? And is this doing anything to the left or the right channel? Stereo recording, what if I combine the two and I speak a little bit into this one? If I speak into this one, is it separating the channels into two different distinct channels? So you've ordered your anamorphic lens kit and you want to know how to de-squeeze that in DaVinci Resolve 16 or any edits of your choice. Well, the method that I'm using, not sure if it's the best method, but this is just the way I did it, is I multiplied the width by 1.15 because that's the squeeze factor and that's the maximum you can get out of the DJI Pocket 2. According to Freewell, that's due to limitations on the DJI Pocket 2. So that's your little anamorphic lens, which is slightly curved. I mean, it doesn't give you Hollywood results, but it does a pretty cool job and you can get some different effects and blue lens flares, which some people hate, but let's not get into that today. So if you're going to do 4K on the DJI Pocket 2 and you're shooting in 4K, that's basically 3840 pixels across by 2160 pixels in height. So all you need to do is multiply 3840 by 1.15, which is the de-squeeze factor, and you get 4416. Then if you go into your project settings, all you need to do is choose 4416 for the width, leave the height the same. So you want to stretch out your clip, but you don't want to affect the height. So I unlink that in DaVinci Resolve and I just put 1.15 and then it stretches the width and leaves the height the same. And I drag that clip into my timeline and there's my anamorphic clip. So the next one is the DJI Pocket 1 with the old Freewell wide angle lens against the new anamorphic that gives you a wide angle lens as well in the kit. Do these things actually work? Let's, let's check the difference on the DJI Pocket 1. Have they actually improved over the old Freewell wide-angle lens? It's a good question. And if you're wondering, yes, that is the correct tripod for the DJI Pocket 1, you can never be too careful. So this is the old wide-angle lens from Freewell, and as you can see, it's wider. It's probably like 18 millimeters. I think maybe even 20 mil, and the other one's maybe like 24 millimeter, but this is pretty darn wide. It's giving you quite a lot. Now I always wanted to know if there's any vignetting. That's the issue I always saw with this. A little bit of sharpness issues on the corners. So do the hands all come through okay and does it look okay? This is the old wide angle lens. Let's compare the old wide angle lens, this one for the Pocket One, against the current Freewell wide angle lens that they've released. It does appear that the new wide angle is less wide than the older one, which is interesting. Will the new anamorphic lens with the ND filters work on something like the Femi Palm? Someone asked me that, let's test it out. Might be worth testing. Might not work, but let's just see what happens. So, so it doesn't look too bad. I didn't use an ND filter because it would block too much light for the Femi Palm 2. What does the anamorphic lens look like on the DJI Pocket 1? I never discussed this in the last video. Let's do a little quick test just to show you what it'll look like. Next one. Somebody asked me, do ND filters even make a difference on the DJI Pocket 2 or is it some kind of conspiracy that the camera companies make you believe to buy ND filters and spend more of your hard-earned money? Let's test this out with the DJI Pocket 2 and the new Freewell ND set with that wide-angle lens. So when you don't use an ND filter on the Pocket 2, the one major effect of that is motion blur and you'll see my hand, if I freeze it, you will see the frame is clear. There's no motion blur. Using an ND filter will stop enough light and allow you to lower your shutter speed and this means you can get motion blur in your shot. But how does the ND filter actually affect the look of your video? Well, the video on the left definitely looks like there's more highlights and roll off on my skin and probably a little bit more harsh than the other three which are using ND filters. However, by using the ND filters, it does look like they appear to give you a slightly darker image, even though they shouldn't change your exposure at all. Hey John, you there? Yes, I'm always here. You know, someone asked me the other day uh -huh. how, I'm, how I create your voice. What do you mean create my voice? <laughs> Can you believe it? That's absurd. I'm as real as the next man. <laughs> I'm real, damn it. He's real. <laughs> I pay my taxes like everyone else. <laughs> yeah, he, he pays taxes, okay? Oh, yes. He's real. Yes. Next question we got was how long you can actually film with the DJI Pocket 2 with 4K 24 frames per second, I guess connected to the dual handle, 
maybe with the wireless microphone connected, something like that. I will test that out right now. I read somewhere that your battery will drain about 1% for every extra minute you film using the do-it-all handle. And I think the external mic needs to be connected as well. So let's test this out. So I tried to see how long my DJI Pocket 2 would last if I continuously recorded. Every now and then I stopped to clear the memory card out, which wasn't very often. And I had all the accessories, the do-it-all handle and the wireless microphone attached. I also kept speaking into the wireless microphone to test this. Testing the do-it-all handle. I was trying to kill the battery by moving the joystick around and switching the gimbal head back and forth. I didn't notice any overheating issues or issues with connectivity. I managed 1 hour 25 minutes and I must say it did pretty well. It didn't even disconnect from the Wi-Fi once. Hey, another question how to guy. Yes, John. Is it possible to fix any of that distortion you get from the anamorphic lenses? Good question. What about distortion on that pocket? And that was sort of in my list. So you can actually do some lens distortion correction on DaVinci Resolve 16 and 17, but it's probably only going to fix the edges slightly. I'm not sure if it's going to sort of get through that entire curve. That's just barrel distortion. The DJI Pocket 2 already suffers from barrel distortion. So anamorphic lenses do create a little bit of distortion. If we okay. go into DaVinci Resolve and go into the inspector, you'll see there's a lens correction and if you click analyze it actually fixes that line. This does work for multiple clips, it doesn't always work, but notice how it crops in a little bit into the frame, but it does actually, if I switch it on and off, it fixes that distortion slightly. I've mentioned this tip before, but it's kind of cool in the DJI Pocket 2 and a lot of people don't know about it, well I hope you know about this, but... So let's say you go into your DJI Pocket 2 and you view and you just recorded a clip and you want to play it back, you play it back, you've got the doodle handle connected, but you can't hear anything. All you need to do is push on the right of the screen up. Increase the volume on the DJI Pocket 2. Not many people know this tip, but it does actually work. Pretty cool. So if you just push on the right of the screen and push upwards or downwards, it'll increase the volume. It's a nice little tip. So there you have it, 15 not so good tips for the DJI Pocket 2. If you don't mind leaving a like, I would appreciate that is if you liked the video. If you have any questions, leave them in the comment section and maybe leave a comment, say hello. If you have never said hello on this channel before, you know, leave some in the comments. I'd love to see some new people and, and I want the old people to comment too. <laughs> you know you are. And if you haven't subscribed, what's wrong with you? Why haven't you subscribed? Tell Uncle How To Guy, what's the problem? Okay, what's the problem? See you again next time.